Super Mario Odyssey is a masterclass in fun game design. Almost every aspect of the gameplay is dialed in and feels great. That's especially true of one of the hallmark features, the cappy throw and the capture mechanic. So in this video, I wanted to take a deeper look at how we can recreate these in Game Builder Garage to some extent. It's almost impossible to take into account everything that cappy does given the node on limit, but we wanted to explore a cappy throw, a cappy boosted jump and the capture mechanic. The first thing we're going to go over is the basic cappy visuals on top of the person's head. We have a basic person here with a camera. We're going to add a rotating cylinder and then two simple box objects. We're going to connect them to the rotating cylinder. That's going to be the base. We'll set it as movable. You can leave it solid and the connection point of center Y positive. For size, we're going with 0 0.6, 0 0.2 and 0.6. One object is going to be the brim of the hat. We'll leave it as movable with a connection point of Y positive, Y negative. A size of 0 0.4, 0 0.10, 0 0.8. The other box is going to be the sort of billboard that holds Cappy's eyes. It'll have a connection point of center center and be sized 0 0.4, 0 0.3, and 0 0.6. We can move those over to the left since we won't be using the simply visual cappy much in this video. I have these basic textures here, one for the brim, one to be wrapped around the hat cylinder, and one for the eyes on the eye billboard. So you see that's looking okay. It's a little weird because the person doesn't actually fit in the center of where their object is. It doesn't bother everyone, but it bothers me. So we're going to add a Z slide connector and give it a very tiny value of 0 0.07 negative. That should place it squarely over the head and make things look a little bit better. Next, we'll move on to creating the active cappy and the throwing mechanic. We'll copy everything we did so far and get rid of the Z slide connector. We'll change this constant to a positive four and plug it into the Y rotation on the rotating cylinder. This is gonna give cappy his basic rotation. The next thing we're going to do is go through all of these objects and set them to zero gravity. That's going to keep the hat from dragging down using physics, even though the objects may not be solid. So that's a good spinning copy right there. Next, we'll move on to the throw. We're going to use teleports, a lot of them in this video. So we'll start with the first one. We're going to use this teleport system to throw Cappy out in front of the player. You'll have an entrance attached to the hat, have it detect cylinders and the exit attached to the person node on. Connection point will be Z positive center and the physics will be set to reset with a direction of Z positive. Launch speed is adjustable, but we'll set it to eight. In order to launch Cappy, we'll need a button press node on. I'll use Y since that's what it is in Mario Odyssey. We'll connect that to the action animation and to the teleport entrance. Wrong direction you should actually set it to Z negative. So now we've got a basic throw and a spinning cappy. We're off to a good start. The next thing we're going to do is create cappy's behavior flow. Instead of just going off into the distance, cappy is thrown, then he waits if you hold down the Y button at a certain point before returning back to Mario. So we're going to have a flag to tell us whether cappy is in flight or thrown. Then we'll have a counter acting as a sort of timer, and you might be able to substitute timers here. Once that counter is done, it'll activate a non node on. That's when we'll cause cappy to stay in place. Then it'll go through another counter to wait another period of time to another not node on, and that's when we'll have cappy return. The first counter will set to a value of 40 on a range of 0 to 40 counting downward. So when it hits 0, the not no down will be activated. The second counter will set to 75 and it'll do just about the same thing. You can also play around with these times and find something that works better for you. To make Cappy stay in place and do other moving functions, we're going to add a moving object. We'll set it to a connection point of center center and attach it to our rotating cylinder. One way to keep something from moving is to get its directional speed and then apply an opposite force. So we'll get a speed sensor and run all three coordinates X, Y, and Z through an inversion node on. Then we'll run that through a set of calculators because we'll want to toggle this stationary function on and off. And we'll put that first not node on into the second slot of the calculate node on and we'll make sure to set the material to zero gravity on the moving object. So now Cappy can be thrown and then he'll stay put. We'll move this up and get it out of the way. 
Now you'll notice there are two cappies, the active rotating one and the one on the person's head. To quickly fix that, we're gonna have a not node on attached to the flag, the is thrown flag. Next, we'll add the return to player. This is gonna be a simple follow, like we do in a lot of tutorials. You'll subtract the location of the following agent from the location of the player. In this case, we wanna follow in all three dimensions. So we'll have three subtraction nodons. Just like with the state put command, we're gonna run it through a set of calculate nodons so that it's a toggle. We only want to send one set of instructions to the moving object, so we're going to add in a small piece of logic, an AND nodon and a NOT. When the first NOT nodon is active and the second one is NOT, then we want to send the stay put command. That way, Cappy will stop receiving the stay put input when it's time to return to the player. Now we have a pretty basic Cappy throw behavior system. Next, we'll work on ending or resetting the throw. A simple way to do this is to check whether Cappy has reached the end of its behavior flow. So we'll check whether the last not node on is active and we'll use a touch sensor to check whether Cappy is back and touching the player character again. So we'll set it to look for the person. We'll use this and node on also to reset both counters and turn the flag off. The next thing we're gonna do is send Cappy to a sort of neutral zone or phantom zone where it can stay until it's summoned again. So we'll have another teleport entrance, but this time we're going to send it to a discrete location that the player hopefully can't see. And we'll use the reset physics so that it stays in place. The next thing we're gonna do is prevent spamming the throw button. We're simply gonna do this by requiring the button press to be joined by the flag being off. That way, you can only throw Cappy when he's not currently already being thrown. Simple enough. Then we'll reroute those outputs to the teleport and the action animation. If you throw Cappy in Mario Odyssey and then jump on it, you'll get a sort of boosted jump. I wanted to replicate that so we have some more interactability with Cappy. There's a pretty simple way to do this. We'll create a touch sensor with a connection point of Y negative, Y positive, looking for the person object, and we'll attach it to the top of the Cappy object. When we detect the person and the A button is pressed, we can apply an upwards boost and throw in an animation to make it look special and tell the player that they've done something successfully. You can use a method where you attach a moving object to the person and apply a force on the Y dimension, but I found that the teleport looks and feels a little bit better. So we'll have an entrance and an exit attached to the player, make sure that the teleport are teleporting the person object, and then wire everything up. You'll want the teleport object exit to reset physics and have a force of 10 in the Y positive direction. I found that attaching it to the person works best. So now when you press A over Cappy when he's at the terminus of his jump, you'll get a boosted assisted jump. We're going to add a calculate node on and a constant just so that we can change the value going into the animation. And we'll add a little sound to also let the player know and give them some feedback that they've done a boosted jump. You can use this for a lot of things like they do in Super Mario Odyssey. You can have Mario jump off of the hat and then throw it again while he's in the air. Now we're moving on to the capture mechanic. So we're gonna need something to capture. We'll add a person node on, just cause they're easy to control. And we'll connect a fish, connected to center center. And then we'll turn off the visibility and physics on the person. We're gonna need a system to switch between the Mario character and the person. So we'll have two flags. On start, we'll turn on the player flag. So we'll immediately be controlling the player character. Then we need an input to switch over to the capturable target. We use a touch sensor that's checking for something. We're actually gonna make it check for a golf ball. The reason we're doing this is because you might have other cylinders in your game. If you turn the visibility and solid physics of a fancy object off, touch sensors will still detect them. So they're perfect for checking for specific objects. 
So if we add a non-solid invisible golf ball to Cappy, we can now detect it independently. When the touch sensor detects the golf ball, it will turn off the player flag. Then we need an exit clause. We'll use the ZL button and the capturable target flag on, and that will take us back and turn on the player flag. It will also turn off the capture character flag. Then we'll take the movement of the left stick and we'll run it through two toggles, which are calculate node on with your toggling output as the bottom input. This way, only the current active target, either Mario or the capture target, will send your stick input to their movement. That'll let you change your movement from one character to the other. A funny thing happens when you try to turn off a flag and turn on another flag, it'll try to do them at the same time and it'll kind of cancel it out. So we add a really short timer before turning the player flag back on and that fixes an issue that I had. So now as you can see, we can switch which character we're moving when we hit the capture character target with Cappy and we press ZL to return to Mario. Now we've got to work on resetting the Cappy throw and hiding the player when we've captured our capture target. So we're going to use that capture input to reset the timers and the flag and activate the teleport on the Cappy behavior timeline so that it acts as if it had returned to the player. We'll send it back to that neutral space. Then we need to take care of the character and put them in a place that you can't see because in Super Mario Odyssey, Mario disappears into the capture target. So we'll add yet another teleport to the person object. We'll set it to check for the person and we'll send it somewhere that the player can't see. At this point, we're on teleport channel D and we'll reset physics. We don't have to worry about them moving much because when we're using the capture target character, Mario won't be moving either. The end of this timer marks when Mario is back in action in terms of movement, so we can use that output to get another teleport to send Mario back into the game over the current capture target, since that's what happens in Mario Odyssey. So we'll attach a teleport exit, this time on the E channel, to the top of our capture target. And we'll activate that teleport entrance that takes Mario out of the neutral zone with this timer output. It can get a little complicated. We'll also play a little sound to let you know that you've transitioned out of capture. Now you can see we send Mario and Cappy back into the neutral phantom zone to await their emergence. And we can switch movement between the two people. Now we need to switch the camera placement between Mario and the captured character. So we're gonna move everything over to the right and make a little bit of space. We'll start with a box. We'll have it as unmovable, and we'll place it at the center of the map, at 0, 0, 0 position. Then we'll add a second box. This one, however, will be movable, but it'll still be invisible. We'll connect them using a free slide connector. And we'll attach the camera that we just severed from the player character to that second movable box. Then we'll get three wormhole exits, one for each dimension, X, Y, and Z. We'll name them X and Y and Z just to make it easier to remember. And then we'll create two sets of wormhole entrances for X, Y, and Z. We're going to send the free slide connector the current world position of the character that we're currently controlling so that the camera switches between Mario and the target. For Mario, we already have a location sensor, so we'll use that. We'll use three multipliers as toggles and we'll do the same for a location sensor that's on the fish. I'm gonna realize it a little bit later, but this location sensor is actually on Cappy, but I'll switch that and you'll see it. Then you'll use the current controllable character flag that we have at the bottom of the programming screen as the toggle input on these multipliers, so that when we switch between characters, we also switch the coordinates that we're giving the camera. Now you can see, when we throw Cappy on the fish, we're now following the fish with the camera. And when we press ZL and we exit the fish, the camera switches back to Mario. Honestly, that's looking pretty good, and it feels good too, gameplay-wise. Next, we're gonna do a few cleanup features to make this a little bit more fully formed. I'll show you how to have an easily destructible object that's destroyed by Cappy. 
Since we added that golf ball, all we need is a touch sensor and a destroy object node on. We'll attach the destroy object to whatever the object you want to destroy is. And then you'll also attach a touch sensor that's just looking for a golf ball. Make sure that the touch sensor is larger than the object enough that it can detect Cappy without it bouncing off. And that should be just about it. You'll be able to destroy simple objects with only three node on. And I actually almost forgot this, but you also should have the Cappy above the captured character if you're trying to truly emulate the game. And that should be as simple as copying and pasting the hat over the top and connecting it to your fancy object. You can then use the active player flag to decide whether to show Cappy on that object or not. This has been a deep dive video, and we've never done a feature that was this involved or had this many implications. That's it for this video. You'll find the game ID on the screen and in the description. Let me know what you think and if you had any fun ideas for this mechanic.